Well, I guess I spoke too soon about all those rocks, huh? About the last half mile, this is <laughs> this is what I've been in. Look at that, canyons, caverns. It looks like it's clearing up a little bit up there, but that's what I've been in for a while. <laughs> that's what happens when you start speaking too soon. Let me pull my foot out of my mouth and uh, continue hiking. But look at the leaves. Everything is turning in here already. I really need to start getting down south so I can see the foliage down there before it all falls off the trees. I gotta get to Virginia. I think I need to speed up a little bit because although it's colder up here than it is down south, so it might never turn. Hopefully I'm right on the timeline of catching a lot of this uh, as it happens. So, because this is the first place I've seen that everything's really turned, started to turn. Everything else is still really green and lush up here. So anyway, that's my story for now. Yeah, you know, I've talked to a lot of people out here on the trail lately. A lot of, you know, I'm around all these towns, so we've got a lot of muggles out here, day hikers, section hikers, all that. Haven't seen many uh, uh, through hikers lately. I've been meandering, so I'm sure, I'm sure I'm definitely bringing up the pack, bringing up the back end of the pack. Uh, I haven't got a hold of Mr. President yet, or none of my ex family and I'm almost certain they've made it to. Harper's Ferry by now with that gap so um, but the one thing that amazes me still people absolutely don't believe <laughs> that I'm through hiking um, because of the size of my pack you know I'm a, I'm a minimalist when it comes to not carrying stuff you don't need right now I'm carrying stuff that I don't need and my pack still I mean I can feel the weight I got an extra quilt. I got my pillow that I'm not using. You know, there's just all this dead weight that I'm not using. There's clothes in there. I don't sleep in. I have these really lightweight, thin, synthetic shirt and uh, pants that I wear. So I'm not, you know, getting my sleeping quilt all stinky and stuff. All the other clothes I got, uh, they're absolutely useless. So I'm, so I think in the next town, wherever I am, I'm gonna pack up my quilt, all those extra clothes, all the li extra little miscellaneous stuff I've picked up along the way. Just seems to happen sometimes. I got extra stuff, like I bought super glue for my feet and um, never used, I mean, I used it once, but I got that liquid bandage and that took place. You know send the super glue home I don't need to carry it now I know it's an ounce might be an ounce but an ounce is an ounce is an ounce and uh, you put 16 of those ounces together and you end up with uh, another pound in your pack that you don't need it's like in my little medical kit my little my little um, I call it douche kit that's what we call it in the Navy a little bag that has all your toothbrush and your razor and your your uh, soap and your shampoo and your all that stuff we call we always call it our douche kit um, I know freaking sailors are always finding some uh, some way to <laughs> be inappropriate anyway <laughs> uh, so my it's a plastic bag that's got like my medical kit you know with bandages and and blister care and stuff like that I got super glue, I got tape, I got uh, a lighter, I've got um, that liquid bandage, I've got, you know, just a lot of miscellaneous stuff. So I could probably lose four to five ounces out of that bag if I, if I uh, wanted to. Um, ooh, it's hot today. Well, it's not hot, but... A lot of climbing today. I was talking about all those flatlands, man. Doing a lot of climbing, and guess what? Tomorrow I go up over 2,000 feet again. So, uh, anyway, I'm glad I saw that. I planned accordingly. Um. Anyway, so gonna get rid of. So the other quill I got weighs. I want to say right about a pound. And then uh, my dead pillow weighs two ounces stuff out of my medical kit is probably going to be another four ounces so I can 
plus the clothes I got. I know the, sh uh, the long johns that I have weigh, I don't know, maybe 12 to 14 ounces. And then the, uh, the extra hiking shirt. I went back, to, you notice I went back to my collared regular shirt. So that extra hiking shirt, that thing's almost a pound. You know, it's that big synthetic wicking. So, I mean, it's probably not a pound. Anyway, I could probably drop down, let's say a good three solid pounds out of my pack right now without affecting my, any of my basic needs. So, plan on doing that. And uh, so anyway, getting back to the point of people can't believe that my pack's so small. They're used to seeing all these through hikers with these big fat packs just full of stuff. And they're just blown away. And I'm like, I'm a minimalist, man. I don't even carry a stove. So that's a big deal, too. I mean, that's not a lot of weight in the grand scheme of things. It is, though. You're, by the time your cup, your stove, the fuel, you cannot get 100 ounce or 100 gram canisters out here anywhere. You can only buy the 250 gram big fat canisters. Those things are heavy. Um, so uh, I think they're, I think the 100 grammers are eight ounces. I think the, uh, maybe, I, 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 I gotta refresh my memory on that, but the 250, they're, they're almost a pound, they're up there. So, I mean, even that in itself is weight, a lot of weight, but it's the minimalist lifestyle, you know, minimalist frame of mind on, I only need one pair of clothes to sleep in. I only need, you know, you don't need a whole bunch of pots and pans and kitchen stuff and all that, especially the way I mean, I cold soak. So all I need is one container to cook in, which I'm not even cooking. So many ways to reduce, and I'm not recommending that anybody out there cold soak. Absolutely not because it's an acquired taste. I know a lot of hikers that do cold soak. I know a lot of them. And they enjoy the hell out of it. They enjoy the freedom of not having to worry about if their canister is getting low. If they need to buy another one in town, you're carrying two canisters because one's almost empty. So you're carrying the extra way. So all of those things add up. But you think about it, my sleeping quilt and my clothes, my electronics, my medical kit, all of that fits down into the bottom quarter of my bag. I can stuff it down in there. I got a, like a trash compactor bag in my bag as a liner. So if my pack uh, leaks through, wets through, whatever, nothing in my pack in the bottom is getting wet. So I'm not even using a quarter of my bag for my sleep system, my clothes, my electronics, all of that stuff. So I shove that stuff all the way down the bottom. My bear bag goes on the top. As long as it's not stupid full, I don't even get up to the top of the frame of my pack. I, I mean, there's six inches of frame sticking up above my pack so it looks like it slopes down like there's nothing in there. So it, that's, it, it looks like a kid's backpack with a, with a uh, with book bag. Now, the picture I put on my profile picture, that's my bear bag that is full to the brim. That's why the bag looks so big. Because I got a 20 liter bear bag. Normally, the most that's ever full on that is 10 liters. But I got boxes, I got a resupply, there was stuff in there. Uh, someone else got me some stuff. Uh, so I had all this stuff, and I, of course I'm not gonna throw it away. Uh, there's no real place to give it away. So I'm gonna eat it all. But I got like eight days of food. <laughs> I don't need to carry all this, and it's heavy. But uh, I've eaten a lot of it. You can see, you can't, look, my pack is really getting small again. Um, Cause I've eaten a ton of it. I've been eating the bulky stuff first. The stuff that really has volume so that I can get my pack size back down. It bugs me if I turn around and look to the side and I can see my pack, that's always bugged me. 
So anyway, with that in mind, here I get this pack and it's only quarter way full and then I put a 10 liter bag on top with, you know, four or five days of food on it. It still doesn't even look like it's halfway full. And um, it looks like, it almost looks like my pack has a watermelon in the bottom of it, a big fat watermelon. And that's it. So a lot of people, a lot of people just, they'll ask me, are you, they'll always ask me, are you section hiking? But they'll see my gaiters and they know the through hikers wear gaiters. So you're not through hiking, are you? And the first thing comes out of my mouth when I say yes, they're like, man, you don't have a pack. <laughs> so it's, I'm, I'm ranting about this. I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, but it just, it's the point of, I'm sort of proud of that. Sort of proud of that because it's not about the weight. You know, everybody makes a big deal about the weight. Nobody makes a big deal of how big your pack is, you know? And I've always, I've always keyed on that. The smaller, the better. Um, because it just makes you feel like you're carrying less stuff. And usually you are. Yeah, that's the problem. Guys out there, you guys and ladies that are contemplating going out and buying gear and going hiking. Get the gear you're going to use. Buy the smallest bag that you think it'll fit in. Try it out. If it fits and there's room you're good, okay? Not a lot of room, just enough room to get your gear in there and maybe some extra stuff that you end up tweaking on the trail or something. Because, so my very first pack was a, I think it was a, it was an Osprey 85 liter. It was huge, just large. And uh, better believe I filled up every inch of that sucker. When you got the space, you find stuff to put in it. Um, I'm even tempted. I'm really tempted to try. Um, I think if I got my break between the Florida Trail, I think I'm going to be, no matter what, I think I'm going to be off in December. I'm, I think I'm going to buy a 35 liter pack uh, from the same company this one makes. They make a 35 liter. I'm going to see if I can get my stuff in it. See if I can pack and see uh, if I can make a 35 liter work because I'll save at least three quarters of a pound on weight just in my pack, which is cool. So anyway, muggles, I gotta go. Hello everyone. Uh, <laughs> it's been a great day. It's end of 91, I think. Uh, about three miles from the halfway point on the Appalachian Trail. So I am, I stopped here on purpose. I could have pushed in. I just got here, I got my tent set up. Um, as you can see in the background. Um, I stopped on purpose because there is a hostel down there but it would have taken me another hour and a half to get down there. It's gonna be dark. I'm not going into a hostel after dark. So there's too much to do when you get in there. They have to walk you through and you take a shower and you gotta put your gear away and there's all these things that you have to do when you go to a hostel and uh, too late to do that. They, they would take me but I don't want to go through all that at 8 o'clock at night so um, I had a mosquito fly right in my eye man. Uh, anyway, whoop, let me catch the light right. Uh, good day, I could have easily pushed 20 but like I said I didn't want to get past the town, I want to go in tomorrow. It's the, like I said, it's Halfway Point, Pine Grove, I think it's called. They have a museum there, AT Museum. They have a hostel there. They have uh, restaurants and stuff. And they have the general store, which, um, where they do the half gallon challenge. I think I explained that to you guys. And then, um, which I'm not going to do, but I'm going to get the burger. Um, so I'll get in there a little early. If I only, I only got three miles, I'll probably roll out. It's getting light at seven, so I'll probably be on the trail by eight. That puts me down there three miles. Oh, push me down there. Ten-ish. Take my time. It's downhill. <laughs> it's downhill though, so I'll probably be there before ten. Uh, but I'll still eat a burger if they're. I, I know they're open. They're going to be open, so um, I'm sure they'll serve. Or they're, maybe they're doing breakfast, and maybe I'll hang out for a couple hours and do lunch too. So. Uh, good day. Like I said, 16, 16 miles, I think. I stopped in this little, 10 miles out, there was this little uh, general store right off the trail, 0.2 miles off the trail. So 
walked over to it, got a big fat burger. It was a great burger, homemade. The lady squished the patty and everything and uh, had all good stuff on it. And they made these French fries. I asked if there was fries with it. She goes, I can make you fries. So I said, yes, please. Crispy, crunchy, nice, greasy French fries. They were awesome. So I had that, you see, you probably saw the picture. You probably can't see the fries too well, but you can see the burger. Uh, the burger doesn't look that big, but it was nice and thick on the inside. And, um, and I got a cream soda and a regular Coke. And I got to charge some of my battery up. And uh, so I pushed on another six miles to here. Uh, like I said, meandering all day. And then, uh, so um, tomorrow, I'm going to that town, like I said, check it out, get a burger, and keep going. So Waynesboro's a little ways down the road. I'm running out of towns that I can stay in, so uh, most of them have hostels, though, so I could probably arrange something like that. I just got to find some place where I can sit down for a day and uh, upload videos. So I'm working that issue, uh, as you will know when you see these videos. So um, life is good, halfway point. That's... that's uh, Awesome. I didn't expect to be here before October 1st, and I did it, what, what are we on, the 27th? So I got, I think, three days left in this month. So if I can knock out another 50 miles or so, that really bodes well for me um, um, getting, down, getting, south, getting down south. So I'm uh, trying to think of anything else I need to say. Sorry about it. There's no, there's no pictures. There's no nothing. I, I tried to take pictures of stuff, but... Uh, it's just, you're in the trees. So, I, I mean, I showed you some of the rocks and stuff today, but uh, uh, I'll take some pictures of the place I'm at, the museum and stuff. Maybe I'll walk around down there and take some pictures for tomorrow. Um, yeah, the towns are starting to spread out, and there's not a lot of, there's resources, lots of resources, but not a lot of hotels in all these towns. Um, uh, maybe when I get to Harper's Ferry, Harper's Ferry's coming up. Um, and then uh, I hope the bridge is fixed at Harper's Ferry. So last year, at the end of the year, was it the end of the year or maybe earlier this year, train crashed uh, outside of Harper's Ferry uh, between Harper's Ferry and Maryland, West Virginia and Maryland. And it, 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 the bridge collapsed. So they're rebuilding the bridge now, but they weren't going to re... And attached to that bridge was the... The hiker's uh, bridge, the hiker's walkway to go across the river. I think it's the Potomac River. Uh, so there's no way for hikers to get across the river. So they were running shuttles earlier in the year, but they said it should be done by now. Um, I'm hoping, I don't want to have to take a shuttle, but I won't have to pay for it, but it's just a pain in the ass of waiting for somebody to come get you and drop you off on the other side. And you're sort of missing the trail because if you can't walk across the river, you know, it's sort of, I mean, you're re rerouting and you're doing more miles, don't get me wrong, but it's sort of like missing a piece of the trail. So, I mean, that's that would sort of suck, but uh, do what we got to do. Um, it's part of the deal. It's like the, what you call it, uh, having a canoe a across the Kennebec. Uh, I mean, I guess that counts. <laughs> he didn't walk across it, so I, I'm assuming that counts. Uh, it does count, I'm just saying. <laughs> but if you're shuttling from one side of the river over this big bridge to the other, well, I guess alternate route that uh, they have to do. They, they have alternate routes, so as long as I get from point A to point B, I guess it counts, or it counts in my head, let's put it that way. I don't really care, I don't really care if anybody else thinks it counts. So, gotta do what you gotta do. So, anyway, that's my story. Um, uh, I don't think there's anything else. It's getting dark, I don't know if you can tell in the well, right there, it looks like it's pretty bright out, but uh, it's cloudy. It might rain tonight, as a matter of fact. I know it's supposed to rain on Tuesday, so uh, maybe get through tomorrow and then uh, hopefully get to Lafayette. They do have a hotel there. I just don't know availability. I know it's pretty cheap, so it's probably a little mom and pop place. I just need to be able to stop and uh, do the videos. That, that's my thing. Uh, I'm, I'm getting behind, so... Anyway, that's my story for today. Hope you guys are safe. I really do. I know uh, I just, someone passed me on the road today or on the trail today and um, they stopped and asked if I was a through hiker and all that. And uh, they were wearing masks and uh, uh, 
they asked about COVID and I'm like, I don't know anything about it. I don't pay attention. Um, it's not affecting us out here, that kind of thing. And um, the, one of the guys said, yeah, they just lifted all the restrictions in the state of Florida. There's no more COVID restrictions. I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a bold step. So that's good to hear. Maybe that means we're getting an upper hand. I don't know. Or maybe all the people that were going to get sick are sick and people stop getting sick. I don't know what the spike numbers are. I don't know what's going on. So, But anyway, that's what the guy said today. I'm like, that's interesting. So um, that bodes well for uh, December or early January when I go down to do the Florida Trail. Um, if, if the state's open, no COVID restrictions, man, I'm bop right down to Key West. So the guys I was talking to yesterday, I don't know if I brought them up, but the guys that were eating pizza at the ATC Center, they were just in Key West last week. So um, I asked him, I said, what's going on down there? Is there music and uh, everything? He goes, there's no, he said, as long as everybody's six feet apart, nobody's wearing masks. They're playing music everywhere. They're serving beer. You can sit at the bars, the whole nine yards. He said, Key West is as open as it can be. And he goes, if you're sitting next to someone within six feet, you're supposed to wear a mask, but everybody's, nobody's wearing masks down there. So um, I'm like, that's very interesting. So come January I'm I'm going I'm going to get off trail in December I plan on being done with the AT uh the last the last week of November uh or before just depending on my time um I think I'm gonna spend a little bit of December traveling around seeing family and then January January 15th is a date I find out if I get my PCT permit that really everything is revolving around that so I think I'm gonna I think for after I get done with um, Christmas, I think I'm gonna come back over the East Coast over here and stay here until January. And then um, uh, stay here till January. And then uh, once I get my permit, head down the Florida Trail and start hiking the Florida Trail. I hate not starting the Florida Trail on June or July, January 3rd and 4th with the kickoff. Um, but I'm not going to go all the way down there and then find out I can't hike the, there's no sense in hiking the Florida trail. I'm not going to hike the Florida trail. Um, if I can't hike the PCT, I mean, I was hiking the Florida trail just to, um, carry me over to stay in hike shape to hit the PCT. So if I can't do the PCT, I'm not doing the Florida trail. And what I think I'm going to do, I've been talking about or thinking about it a lot lately. Um, either go out and do uh, do some of the CDT or do some of the Arizona Trail, the Colorado Trail, something to that effect. I just don't know next year. So it's all about the PCT. I shouldn't even be talking about this because it's all mute if uh, until we get to January. So uh, flip a coin. I can't imagine they're going to shut down the trail and I, I get my permit and everything's going to be fine. I think I truly believe that's what's going to happen and then I'll like I said, jump on the Florida Trail. Keep on going. Keep on trucking. So anyway, that's my story. Ranting. I uh, hope you guys are safe, like I said. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Tomorrow, actually. <laughs>